Hi everyone, this is Pat. And the message that I have for you tonight, I have entitled 34 Years, My Journey of Being Set Free from Food Addiction. In the Bible verse is Philippians 3, 19, and it reads, Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. And let me pray. Dear Father, thank you for today is my 34th anniversary of abstinence. And I pray to be able to articulate my gratitude and also to give encouragement to anyone who might be struggling with the food at this time. I pray that they will know that if they know Jesus as Lord, then the struggle can forever stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Again, the message is 34 years, my journey of being set free from food addiction. The Bible verse is Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. And it reads, their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Um, As I've said in the prayer, you know, this is my 34th anniversary of, um, you know, freedom from compulsive overeating. You know, I began using food as an escape as a very young child. I've spoken about the pressures that I had having a handicap and also growing up in a segregated South and all of the things that went along with that. And um, so very early, I had an addiction to sugar, and it was regularly available, and I put it on everything. In fact... Most people I knew had an addiction to sugar. Um, It was always there. We always ate sugar. We put sugar everywhere. Candy was everywhere. It was not anything that we even thought about. Um, I had very strong teeth, and though I can remember one of my best friends had rotting baby teeth, but I never suffered in that way. Um, I didn't start really suffering from my compulsive eating until I reached puberty. And that's when I got my wake-up call. Um, I got chubby. And by college, I started the cycle of dieting, losing weight, and then gaining weight um, even more. And repeat, you know, dieting, losing weight, gaining even more weight. Dieting, losing weight gaining even more weight. And this continued most of my adult years. And it wasn't until I was at the age of 41, that was in 1987, that I found a group of people who treated the overeating as a disease. And their prescription was strict adherence to a food plan. And um, they made it easy to do that by Everybody did the same food plan, and um, there was a camaraderie set up in the group, a brotherhood, a companionship, and encouragement. Uh, We were told to speak, you know, not eat. We don't eat no matter what. And by God's grace, um, since August 16th, 1987, I have not eat no matter what. I have been abstinent, and I have had many, uh, you know, n- no matter what, um, stage four cancer. I had um, pregnancy and birth during that time. I, I had another um, condition that caused much pain. You know, many things happen um, in abstinence, and you would think then that was the end of the story, you know, that I got abstinent, I am abstinent, and that's it. Um, But that's not the end of the story. Um, Since that time, I have learned that the Bible says this, unless the Lord builds the house, 
the builders labor in vain. That's Psalm 127. One. So from 1987 to 1991, the first four years of this present abstinence, I was building uh, this abstinent house on a human foundation and um, not on the accepted, you know, um, not on the foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ. I realized that I have made a mistake in math that would make me laugh because I was a math teacher. You know, I've been abstinent through 1987. So in 1987, I was um, 37 years old. That was when I came, became abstinent at the age of 37. Um, but um, I became a born-again believer at the age of 41. That's where I got those numbers mixed up. And so, um, so um, I was building a foundation from 1987 to 1991, um, abstinence on a human foundation. Can't do that. I cannot have a human foundation of anything in my life. And I had to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew about Jesus, but I did not know about the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I praise God for in 1991, Jesus broke into my life through Christian radio. In Christian radio, I heard and accepted the good news um, that my sins could be forgiven and I, at that point, when I gave the Lord my life, um, they were. And I was given new life. I was given the Holy Spirit um, that lived and that came to live inside of me. And um, I am so grateful. So I can't tell you the gratitude that I have um, in hearing the good news. You know, the good news is summarized in that Bible verse in John 3.16. In John 3.16, it says, God so loves the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I have eternal life today. Very, very grateful for that. And once there was a time, like my first four years of abstinence, when it was all about me, you know, my weight and not going back into the food and X, Y, Z. Today, I strive to make my abstinence all about the Lord. That's what I strive um, to do. I, tr I strive to do that. And so I was thinking about um, that, um, about this fact, and I thought about Isaiah um, 30, 20 through 22, and um, this is how it reads. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ear will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a minstrel cloth and say to them, away with you. And that really summarizes um, who I am in Christ. You know, his spirit has been placed inside of me. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I have nothing of eternal value um, without him, and um, he has, um, I did have times of adversity, I had affliction, but I know the truth today, so those things don't matter to me, and um, I don't have any other God, you know, there can be no other God in my life except the Lord himself, and even the thought of it makes me see it for what it is, it's like a dirty rag, it's like a minstrel cloth, and um, I throw it away um, and say, away with you. So this is my prayer. Father, I thank you for 34 years of freedom from compulsive overeating. 
Thank you even more for my salvation. Each day of life that you give me, I pray to live in the joy that I have crossed over from death to life. I want to stay well. I want to stay strong. I want to be mightily used by you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic, amazing um, night. If you're still listening to this at night, have a wonderful day in the Lord. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.